Hello guys, it's your mama's nuggets, but you can call me nuggets and welcome back to nature craft Sitting here with the bard bird and Spock. I have no idea what this guy's looking at. What is so interesting up there? Are you are you mocking me by looking at Okay, you're not looking in that direction. I was gonna slap you. I Know the thing is still there We're gonna get to that Anyhow Hope you guys are doing great today. I am doing awesome. We are back here on the server. Uh, hope you liked the last episode where we uh, did the drawbridge. Uh, also, maybe my little mod tutorial showed you a thing or two. Hopefully you enjoyed all those. Thank you for the XP's. Since then, I haven't done much in here uh, other than taking care of the Ancient Warfare guys. Other than that, I have done a little bit out there, though, to try and set up four things. Let me show you a couple things that I've done. Now, Tomber had used these do or set these doors up in this tower to get to her little house that she has out there, which I thought was fun. But I didn't like there being a door in the tower. There shouldn't be a door on the outside of the tower. The only way that you should have to get in is the gates. So I stopped. I got rid of the door. Uh, I've also used the builder's wand in our wonderful tree farm. And I've made a wall around this village. So these guys would be protected. Now all I have to do is light it all up and they're all good. They're also rather, or kind of protected because one of the candles actually spawned in that church. So this place should be pretty good. However, that is Tomber's little house that she has claimed and likes. So I made sure the wall went around it. And so she's not uh, outside of the wall, a little hobbit by herself. <laughs> I put gates in these. I haven't finished this at all. I mean, building the wall itself was easy just using the builder's one. But what I'm going to show you is some more stuff that uh, I put to good use from random things, which is, let's see right here, what did I use? I used this. You have a contact button and a contact lever. They're basically blocks that work like buttons and levers. Uh, so right here, this brick, we right click that. I put her, put her in a little double piston extender there, and now she can walk through. There is a contact lever right there. You put a block in front of it, and it detects you right-clicking on the block in front of it and acts like either a lever or a button. So if I right-click on that, you can see it sets off our double piston extender, which is all just basic redstone stuff. And, uh, yeah, made her a secret door. So I thought that was pretty neat. But we're going to move on to something else. All right, we're back over here at our blacksmith shop. Still love this place. Still think it looks great. Never going inside. <laughs> there is no point. But that's neither here nor there. Anyhow, things that I want to do today. One is finish the Ancient Warfare quest line. We don't have very much left, just three things. But we're going to get some of that done right now. So, next thing. <clears throat> So, next quest is Death Happens. Your priest uses revive. I mean, you wouldn't want your minions to stop working, would you? You'll have to give them back their items, though. So, the, your priest uses revive was a poor joke at, um, like a D&D &D type thing. So, anyhow, you can make a priest, you put him down, he will go and revive your people if they happen to die. But you have to give them their items back. But other than that, you know, they come back to life. So, what do we need for a priest? Priest. We need food, two golds, and a book. Two golds, a book. And I made food packets before got 20 left so let's make a priest 
There we go. Priest. Dangling. All right, spawning our priest. There we go. The priest. He's gonna go get some pork chops. Dummy, it's right there. And a bed, of course. Because it is about nighttime. But that priest will walk around and heal our guys if we need to. Alright, so what are we going to take? Totem of Undying? Glass layer building fungus? Hmm. I don't know if these are all... These are, these are all good rewards, which I know I chose them. But do we want a totem of undying? Because that would be nice to have. Do we want a glass layer building fungus? You might not know what that is. It's a fungus that fungus that will build a layer of glass, which is kind of interesting. We haven't got into Grim Pack at all. We'll do that at some point in time. Or do we want a functional squid statue that will give us ink sacks? Well, I can make my own functional squid statue. I can eventually make my own glass layer building fungus. So I'm going to take the Totem of Undying. Next thing we're going to do is storage. Well, now you need to put all your stuff somewhere. Now you need storage blocks to connect to your control unit. If you want a courier to be able to use this, you will need a warehouse station and a worker to organize things from this. So we need to make a warehouse control block. And that we need storage blocks to connect to the control unit. So, let's go make one of those. Alright, back to the blacksmith shop. Let's see, what do we need to make the warehouse control unit? We're going to make all the things for this at once, hopefully. So, we are going to need to make a warehouse control block. We're going to need two chess piece paper and some wood. And some wood. There we go. Warehouse control block. Bam. Done. Dingalings. There we go. So, do we want water walking boots, a pitchfork, or a decorative guardian statue? Well, I've already made a guardian statue, so I don't need that. I'm going to pick water walking boots because it sounds fun and handy. Next thing we need for the last quest in this is specify which farms which people work on. This will keep your workers from bumping into each other and trying to work on the same thing. So that's work orders. Work orders, you can tell each worker to work at a certain spot. So if you had multiple farms and you wanted different workers or farmers to work at different farms, you would give them the work orders to do that. We're just going to craft a set of work orders right now to finish off the quest line. So, to craft some work orders, you're going to need gray dye. I just went and made some black dye from a couple of black flowers. Grabbed a piece of bone meal. There we go, gray dye. Also going to need a piece of paper. And we can make our work orders. Bam, work orders. Done. And that is our Ancient Warfare 2 quest line all complete. Now, when I made this quest line, it was just to give you an idea we're going to get a worker, of things you can do, ways you can go, and to basically just get you into it. I didn't want to go over the entire mod because, uh, I don't know, it's... When I do quests, I don't want a quest that forces me to do everything in a mod. I'd like to only do parts of it, and I didn't want to make you guys do every single thing in the quests, or in the mod, by giving you the quests for it. Just kind of get your feet wet, give you an idea, show you a few things that it can do. So, we are going to move past that a bit. So what I want to do now is make some... We got a warehouse control block, we need to make a warehouse interface. Let's make that. That'll go right here with our warehouse control block. And then we're going to need some warehouse storage. What do we need for large warehouse storage? Some iron and some plant. All right, so let's make some large warehouse storage blocks. We're going to make nine. Okay, so I went and grabbed an 
Oxide Daisy. If you didn't know, that will make light gray dye for you. So, now we need to make a routing order. Bam, and bam. So, routing order is what you're going to use to make a courier. Courier is what you're going to need to basically deliver all your stuff to... to it's going to help automate all your things. So I'm going to actually move the farms around a bit. I'm going to switch them from two to one, and I'm going to make it much bigger. And I will be back with you guys after I'm all done with that. All right, so I moved the farm. I made it bigger. And now Farmer Tim has got a lot more wheat to take care of. I only made two rows of carrots because we were getting tons of carrots, but we weren't getting a lot of wheat. But I want a lot of wheat because I want the farmer out there to take care of the animals to be able to give me a ton of cows so just so you know this is us using the NPCs we don't need to use the NPCs there is ways that you can power your farms no matter which farm it is without NPCs and I would like to do that in today's episode we are going to make a windmill powered farm and we're going to do it with that. So I'm going to sleep the night and I will be back with you in a minute. All right, I just came out here. I've crafted a bunch of stuff for the windmill. Uh, well, actually, I forgot to craft some of it. So I actually went up there and made a little platform to work on, got rid of the other windmill and um, then forgot and had to go craft the things. But I do have something that I touched on in my mod spotlight for random things. I've got some returning blocks of sticks. So we got 10 seconds. Let's just pillar on up here. And there we go. And now you can see they're all going back into my inventory. Super helpful things. So, now as far as automating stuff, we're going to automate... We're going to automate a simple farm that we, we're going to do a little overkill here, basically. So what we're going to do is put this heavy flywheel controller. I'm probably going to place this wrong. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so there you go. Stored in it, out of it, losses, so on and so forth. So it tells you the torque. Torque is what you use in this pack. I also made a heavy flywheel energy storage, so that's going to go right there. Now, any torque that is generated by this that isn't used will get stored in there, so you'll have extra left over. Okay, we just got back up here again because I did forget something else. We need a windmill controller. Now, what to do, what to do. I want to move these back one, so we're going to get this jazz out of the way. Now we're going to move that guy there, and then that guy there, and we're going to put our windmill controller there. I believe that is facing the right direction. Okay, so I made a diamond hammer. The diamond hammer, you push Z to toggle it from hitting stuff to turning it, and then click on the bottom of this guy here, and you can actually turn it. We need it to turn so that this torque part here, or gear part, is facing that. So there's that. All right, so a bunch of painstaking blocks later, I've made a giant square out of windmill blade blocks. Okay, that's how you're going to have to do it. Now, when it becomes complete, depending on how many blocks, how far out you go, you can see it's kind of, um, you can see that it's, it is a multi-block structure, it just has this animation, but it is that solid piece. So if I was to use a tool also, well, if I was to break this like that, it would all stop. But it needs to be a solid piece in order for it to turn into this. So we're going to put that down there. It's going to start going. We're going to put our torque shaft on there. And it's not going to turn, so let's move this around so you put your windmill 
controller on the windmill right there. If we right click that, we can tell that it's giving us in 32,000, I believe, 32,000 torque, whatever that is. So then you have to take and use the torque that there. Torque shafts into that thing. And you can see that this is turning, it's turning this and that, which is now storing our torque in here. There's also a little bit of loss with every torque shaft that you use, but this is how you're going to make a, well, a powered farm, basically, that isn't using an NPC. So we're going to hope this doesn't kill us. Okay. Okay, we're back. So, what did I do? Let's show you how this goes. Now, the windmill's there. These things should all spin. If they don't spin, just use your hammer to rotate them until they do. That there is just a heavy torque shaft coming out the back. It goes over there to a junction, which then has another torque shaft, or obviously more torque shaft, that goes all the way down to the bottom floor, which I then put another torque junction on, and it goes out there. Now, just to show you, most of the time, I can almost guarantee it, heavy torque junction, it actually placed the right way this time. It normally does not. Just telling you. It all depends on what you're looking at when you do it, but see, then it won't place the right way, so then you get your hammer out and you right click to rotate it until it works together. So then I came out here, I placed down the crop farm, I also put a heavy torque distributor on the end of it. So now this is getting power. If we right click right there, you can see it's getting 200 and whatever, 2049 amount of torque. That's your version of RF, I guess. So watch how fast this goes. You've seen the guy inside with a hoe doing the work himself. But as you can see, powered is probably much better. So we're going to throw some water down there. Because we all know that sugarcane needs to be next to water. And actually we can't do this because it plowed the land. So what we're going to do is break this first. And break this stuff. And that stuff. And accidentally make water go everywhere yeah you shouldn't oh it's still got torque left over in it so it stored some more torque that's why it did this so now hopefully with any luck that should be an automatic sugar cane and cactus farm run by a windmill Which, I mean, I think the windmill, the blades and everything else, I think it looks pretty good. But that's your basic power generation. Uh, well, that's the best power generation. But yeah, so that's probably one of the best ones. It looks awesome. It makes for a nice windmill. The water wheel's good. There's also a sterling generator, none of which produce RF. It just produces torque. There's also a hand crank, which I don't want to sit there and right-click stuff, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, the sterling generator, you just put coal in and it'll create power from the coal, same as most other things do. And then it can run your farms also, so you don't need to use NPCs, but I rather like to. So, moving on from that. Alright guys, we're back. Finally, finally had something figured out. We're going to talk about this a lot here. Okay, so... Whew, the courier. The courier is great. 
I took the stuff that we made, our warehouse storage. I made some more of those, so we just added it in here. I have a warehouse control block. You have your warehouse interface. Okay, when you put your control block down, it brings up a box like this. That's your workspace for your warehouse. You have to put your warehouse storage in there. It doesn't have to be like this. It can be any way you want. I just thought this looked nice. You also have to make a warehouse interface. That is what you use to put stuff into your warehouse. It needs to be inside of the workspace. If it's not, nothing will happen. So, as you can see here now, finally, we are getting wheat in there. And I have leather in there. I did that by putting the stuff in here. Now, as far as the courier goes, and this block. Oh my goodness, this block. So I have, well, let's catch this doofus and we can, I can finally show you what's taken me the better part of an hour and a half to figure out. Well, it's just taken me quite a while. So come here, doofus. Let's take the routing order. All right. So we got our routing order, right? It has that for, for uh, section one or whatever, for number one and that for target two. So crop farm target one. We want to take 64 wheat from the up position. And then we want to deliver it to the warehouse interface. 64 wheat to the down position. Now, I want to change this also. I have put exact. I want to change it to put any. I don't care how much is there. Just put it there. We're also going to take any. So take anything there. It doesn't count the stack size whatsoever. And it's going to put it in here. Now... This is down on this block. All right. So whenever you want him to deposit something, you have to put it to down in the warehouse. Then it'll go in there. Now, the part that I didn't know about is crop farm up. This is up. The top part is up. But when you put your crop farm down, it's not set up to do that. You have to click on the sides button here, and it'll tell you right now the block sides, bottom, top, front, right, left, and rear, and the direction that it is considered for the thing. However, the inventory itself was different. It had front, east as front, and then it had top up as bottom, and it had bottom down as top, which doesn't make any sense at all. I had to make sure that the top and up, the top up here, and the up the top part of the block were considered top. I did that by clicking right here until it said top. I also changed bottom to bottom and front to front. After I did that, this dude actually started picking up wheat. So now we can give him back his routing order and we'll just watch. It says 192. He's going to take any from over there. It'll take him a second. And he's going to come over and deposit it. And there's now 288. Alright, in episodes, I was hoping that there would be something in Architecture Craft or um, anywhere else, but there isn't. But So I'm going to make a walkway that goes across this. And I'm going to use chisel and bits to make a spike that I can set up that's one block height that I can put all across the top of this so that it looks like we, they just took trees out of the ground and, you know, filed the tops with the spike and then shoved it down on the ground to make the wall. That's what I'd like to do. So I'm going to do all that stuff in between episodes. But that's all I have time for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and hopefully this helps you out a little bit with Ancient Warfare 2. Getting yourself a courier and getting yourself all automated. If you did enjoy the episode, please let me know. Comments are always, always appreciated, and I try to answer every one of them. Thanks a lot, guys. It's your Mama's Nuggets, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.